Hey everybody, sorry I was muted. Rookie mistake, always the rookie mistake. How are we? Hopefully you're doing all okay. Let me just check the audio levels are all okay. There we go. Let's just um, <laughs> get that sorted. It's always a rookie mistake when you're muted, right? Unfortunately, it happens. Um, it happens. I'm operating on not very much sleep today. But anyway, this is a art and design stream my second one um you may remember um, a few days ago a couple of days ago actually i did my first well, technically my first art stream and um it was going through my jean gray face stick which you can which you can kind of see there, just over there um, and it was a lot of fun i had a lot of fun with it but uh i thought it might be fun tonight as to maybe design one from scratch or at least start designing one from scratch that's what i'm going to be doing that's what i'm going to be focusing on i'm going to be heading over to the second screen in just a little second but i wanted to say a massive welcome to everybody who's tuning in tonight um a big thank you of course for your support and let's go let's kick over into the second screen so what we're going to be doing is a little bit of a uh let me see let me go we're gonna have, I think we're gonna be doing a spider verse. That seems to be the vote from Twitter. So we'll do um spider verse. Okay, and I'm just gonna get my folder set up as well. So we want assets, assets, um, and like research. Before we do anything, right? We kind of um want to do a little bit of research. We're gonna be hopefully doing a little bit of Peter Parker, uh, a little bit of um miles morales maybe some spider gwen we can get in there as well and just show you what i kind of do with my um with my face stick artworks that i that i typically do so i'm just going to move myself over to the side a little bit let's just let's just get myself nudged over there there we go okay so so we're going to be doing that now, if I just go back to my Finder window, um, what I forgot to do is if I go back up here, go to my Guides folder. So as you can see, we have three fight sticks. These are fight sticks that I own. Um, and I think tonight we're probably going to do the Nikon Daija. The Nikon Daija, for the very reason of this is my Nikon Daija, the Jean Grey fight stick that you, that you see over there is a Nikon Daija. I'm a big fan of this stick. Um, it's had some firmware updates which makes it really quite competitive now. It's not the best stick on the market by any means but I really like it and I would call it a, a budget stick but also quite a, quite a high quality stick for the budget. So we're going to do the guide for that. And as you can see, I think this is a traditional Vulix uh, button layout. I think that's correct. But anyway, you can see that we have, you know, lots of lots of space to work with. We have buttons here. We have the the hole cutout for the um, uh, the, uh, the the stick, the lever, and little screw holes and a little color. That's a little LED light that comes on the fight stick. So we've got that to mess around with as well, and uh, just kind of leave that. Make sure that your design doesn't have anything going over that little saw is is the, the gist of it, okay? So, so what I'm going to do is open up um, Adobe InDesign just to get my artwork file all set up. Let's just get this over here so you can all see what I'm working on. There we go. So we're going to do a new file. So this is our canvas size, okay? We're going to be kind of compositing and stuff like that on here and if i go back to my illustrator file again this is the artwork so now that we don't we've kind of looked at that we've explained what it is we can uh we can close that down we don't need it if i go back to my finder window there we go so this is the file right here okay if i just do a quick preview a quick look you can see that there go back to my indesign file and drag and drop literally just drag and drop that in here and as you can see, my, my little cursor is changed. So that is basically the, the the file that I'm about to place in the document. It's kind of like in in memory until I click. Okay, let's just zoom out. So there we go. So now we have a kind of artboard canvas ready 
to start creating um, some some cool stuff. And again, guys, ask me any questions as we're doing this. We're just hanging out. We're just chilling out, having some fun, um, creating some Into the Spider-Verse artwork. Um, hopefully, anyway. We'll see how it comes together. It may all go horribly wrong, but hey, we're going to have some fun chilling out anyway. And hopefully, we'll, we'll by the end of it, we'll have created, um, over a couple of sessions probably, we'll have created something which, which is pretty cool. I hope so anyway. Uh, right, so let's just do a quick file save here. So we're just going to do Spider-Verse um, stick. Oh no, I say Spider-Verse artwork. There we go, that'll do. Uh, and then we're going to go find our folder, which is Fight Stick Artwork and Spider-Verse. There we go. And just paste it. Sorry, not paste it. Save it straight into there. So we're kind of all set up. But first things first, before we're properly set up and ready to start creating some artwork, I want to... I At the moment, you can see that um, when I'm selecting this, it's, it's blue. It's like a little blue outline. And that's because the layer that I've got it on is blue. I actually want to change the color of this. So let's just click up here. Um, and that, I, I want it to be nice and clear when I've selected this, this layer. So it's gonna be red and I'm just gonna call it guide, all uppercase, so I know exactly what it is. We're gonna lock it. There we go. Actually, no, sorry, that was that was incorrect. I meant to do lock the layer, not the, not the object or the guides. I wanna lock the layer and just type in guide there we go okay there we go so now you can see the little padlock up in the top corner there um is is all um what do you call it oh padlock it means it means it's locked so that's pretty cool so i'm going to be fumbling my words probably a lot tonight because i've never designed whilst commentating before uh, really so it's going to be quite it's going to be an experience everybody an experience so next up, what we want to do, a little bit of research. So um, I'm going to create a new layer. And as you can see, that went up to layer two above the guide. So at the moment, I want it beneath the guide. So you just drag it and drop it underneath. We're going to recall that. I'm just going to call that artwork because that's where our artwork is pretty much going to be. And that layer is obviously going to be unlocked because we're going to be editing on that and having some fun with it. So I'll just a quick save there and go back to my finder window. Here we go, and just go up a layer, Spider-Verse, there we go, and get rid of that little tab, and Assess and Research, I'm just going to open this in a new tab, there we go, so it's all there, collapse that one as well. So we're going to be dumping in here some of our research images, and of course, there's no better place for research images than the internet, so let's just, let's do Miles Morales first of all, okay? Let's just find some cool images of Miles Morales. And we're just gonna find some cool ones. Large size is what we want. Like some cool poses is what we really want here. That's quite good. Open image in a new tab. There we go. That's actually quite smart, isn't it? Let's grab that. Let's, um, let's do that. Uh, save image as. And we'll just call that Miles Morales 1. And we'll just dump it in our in our folder, assets and research, and we'll just create a new folder called images. Okay, there we go. And save that. So that's cool. That's that's actually really quite cool. I quite like that. Let's see what else we've got. Let's see what else we've got. There's so many cool stuff here. There's like so much cool um cool artwork. Wait, you know we're going to be doing. Um, you know we're going to be doing a bit of a Spider Verse um, kind of thing here. I actually quite like that. I actually do quite like that. I like a lot of the colors here. Actually, let's just come up. Let's just click on that. That's actually really cool. Is there any decent? That's actually really smart. I like that as well. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> this is a spider cat. That's really cool. That's a cool one. I do like that. So let's do uh, copy image. Let's open up Photoshop. Let's get our Photoshop going as well. May as well. We've got all the time in the world, folks. All the time in the world. We're just hanging out. We're just having some fun. We're just chilling. Okay, let's do that. Uh, there we go. That's really cool. Okay, so that's good. And we'll definitely save this one as well, because this one's really, really, really cool. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, save. There we go. And we'll call you MM3 as well. That's pretty cool. So let's go to, uh, where are we? JPEG, that's fine. 
Okay, and yep, yeah, okay, that's fine. So we're gonna now place these into our InDesign document, everybody, okay? And in order to, uh, to do that, all you do is Command D, okay? Or it is File, uh, Place. Go to our, where we saved our images. Go to this one first, because it's actually really quite cool. And what we're gonna do is just, just randomly, it doesn't matter, at this point, it does not matter where it's gonna go. Okay, but right, now I want to start selecting a color palette. Okay, so let's go to my swatches. Here we go. This is just these are just all default stuff. We can actually get rid of anything we don't need by doing the little hamburger here and select all unused. As you can see, it selects everything that we're not really kind of using. We're using the die cut spot color. That's for our guide. We don't want to get rid of that, but I don't need any other colors here. So just bin them. And that is a way of keeping your artwork just organized there's not any random colors just popping up keep it organized as much as possible and you're gonna have some fun and it honestly it makes the whole thing so much easier when you uh, uh when it comes to actually prepping it for for print and production hmm. so uh, Wadey, sorry, I'm, I'm catching up on, on comments here. What is the benefits of Illustrator over Photoshop? And yes, and are they tools for different jobs? 100% Wadey, they are very much tools for different jobs. Photoshop is exactly what it kind of says on, on uh, the name of the application. It is for photo editing, image editing, image manipulation. Whereas Illustrator is for creating vector artwork and um, really complex vector graphics that you can do stuff like that. And if you remember on the last stream and we're going to be I'm going to be showing you more vector artwork um, in this session as well. But Photoshop is like an image an image is, is usually set resolution and you can manipulate and do some amazing composites with multiple images, multiple layers but they're all ultimately just images. They could be photographs, they could be, I mean, this this is actually an image, it's a JPEG, right? Or it could be a TIFF, or it could be a PSD, or it could be, um, what other, uh, or a GIF or anything like that. But you can actually, like select that red, for example. I can't change the shape of Miles Morales's foot without using brushes or things like that. And I can't actually scale it up without any loss in quality because it's a fixed resolution. Unless you use a plugin which is like an AI based upscaler which can do smart resizing. But in Illustrator, if this was a vector graphic which I'm going to show you later on, I can resize that, I can manipulate that without any loss of quality and it gives me loads of creative freedom to change the colour of a suit with the, with just, just selecting the object and it's a vector so I can really manipulate it and uh, different tools. The, these are, these are high-end tools, high-end applications for doing different things with them. I hope that answers the question. So anyway, we want a color palette. That's what we're doing here. That's what we got sidetracked on. So obviously, I want, uh, I want the red. I like the two, the two kind of shades of red there. I like the gray. This kind of bluish. Um, obviously, the the really dark gray from his suit. We're going to be grabbing that, and we're going to put together a little color palette. So what we need is our ink dropper. So that's just press the I button on your keypad, and you should see that my icon has now changed from an arrow. If I do that again. I've got a little pointer, that means it's a direct selection tool, I can select objects. But I obviously want an ink dropper and that will allow me to grab a colour. Grab any colour, oh, don't do that. Uh, uh, uh. So let's just grab the red, Oop. why is it not doing that? Yeah, don't show again, go away. It's actually not letting me um, grab the uh, the image, uh, the, the, the colour, interesting. Interesting, let's go back to my images, okay. It's obviously not playing ball. Let's just open this up again. Uh, image, image mode. It is RGB, so that's fine. Maybe, obviously something is maybe up. It's not letting me grab the, the color. There are ways around this, of course. I could actually grab the colors from Photoshop, which I might actually do. So what I might do, uh, come on, ink dropper. So I can actually grab 
there. Actually, my, my camera, I think, is actually obscuring it. Let me just, uh, you guys see that there? There we go, you can now see it, perfect. So that's the first color. And if I just bring that up, you can see that I now have the red, I have the hex value, and it's the hex value that we're gonna be wanting here. You can obviously manually type in the uh, the RGB values or the CMYK values. You're gonna need the CMYK values for print. But at the moment, we're just gonna do this as an on-screen example, so the hex values are totally fine. So let's just go copy that back into InDesign for now, because we're putting together a little palette. Um, new color swatch. There's the RGB, and we'll just paste the hex value in there. And as you can see, because I've used the, the hex value, the CC2110 hex value, um, if I've got any coders in uh, the audience, they'll know exactly what hex values are. It's actually giving me the correct RGB values as well. So if I go back to, um, to Photoshop, it's 204, 33, 16. Back to InDesign, 204, 33, 16. That's actually really cool. And I'm also gonna wanna put this into um, uh, our uh, illustrator as well, but we're not there yet. So, okay that, and as you can see, it's, a, it's just pinged there. So if I, so as you see, it's actually quite a dark red. That's interesting, it's very interesting. So we're gonna grab a couple more colors. So again, ink dropper, what we kind of want, and I'm just clicking and dragging here. You can see the little panel to the top right of the screen just going off its nut as it's uh, as I'm scrolling over the different colors here. So I want a really dark color. Let's give us that. Give me the value. There's the hex value there. Go back to InDesign. Let's start putting this together. There we go. Okay, we've got two-tone red going on. I actually quite like the, the uber bright red. We'll probably maybe use that as well, but that's a spot color. So what I might do is if I do uh, select that and do a new color. I can actually create a new color from the from the one that was ex already in the swatch list, but I don't want a spot color. I want a process color. Spot in process. Now let me just explain what spot and process are. Spot colors. Think of it like um, a tin of paint that is that color, and it. It is. It, it comes as that color. It's not being created by mixing other colors. It is just that color. It will only ever be that color um, unless you were to start mixing other colors into it. Now, process means that the color was created by adjusting the sliders, um, the RGBs or the CMYKs, and that color was created by a. And this. And this. Um, if it's an RGB, it's a three color process. If it's print, CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The K is for black. Um, that means that the color was created by four colors all being mixed together. So that's the difference between the process colors and spot colors. A spot color is exactly that. It, it's, it's only one color. It comes as one color. You don't have to create it via a mix of multiple other colors. Uh, so hopefully that helped explain that. And I'll get to the comments in just a second. I know I'm, I'm missing. Um, I know I'm missing a bunch here. Uh, Wadey, what are you saying, Andrew? I feel like we should have brought a notepad. <laughs> not at all, mate. Not at all. Um, you can always watch it back on on replay. So anyway, I, I lost track of what I was doing here. Oh yes, yeah, so I was I was going to create a new color from um, from that die cut spot color. So let's just grab that extra red. Let's just do okay to that. So as you can see, it's du basically duplicated the color, but instead of a spot color, you can see in the window there, it is now a, it doesn't have the dot in the middle. So it's removed the spot effect from it, which means that it's made up of the three colors in our color palette, because we're doing RGB rather than CMYK. So let's grab some more colors, because colors are fun, man. I love colors. So, uh, da, 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 da. let's grab some more. So we've got three reds, I think that's ample. Let's go get some of this dark gray color because that is really cool. Um, it is 262729, cool, let's do that. Um, back to InDesign, let's do new color swatch, thank you very much. Uh, let's go in here, bang. And then we've got this. And then we've got that nice gray color, let's add that to our palette and as you can see it's pinged in to the sidebar over here but we obviously want more colors so 
leave that panel open and go back to InDesign, uh, go back to Photoshop. Sorry, I'm, I keep getting I keep getting my applications confused here. Um, I want this light color as well. That's really nice. It's like a kind of steel blue or something. That's really cool. Copy and paste the hex back into InDesign. Um, replace the hex in here because that was the old color and now we've got the blue so add that to the color palette so now we've actually got one two three four we've got five colors going on we don't want to go too crazy but there's no reason why you can't go crazy with colors colors are amazing let's just let's just go nuts with colors uh let's see what other color should we grab should we grab this kind of purple over here it's actually really nice i like the kind of the deeper purple down here uh maybe maybe that that's quite cool. Let's grab that. And we'll paste it into our swatch panel and we'll just add it. Okay, we'll go over that for now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six colors that we're going to be working for, what I'm working with. So that's pretty cool. So just so I can always kind of see them, what I like to sometimes do is just create a little a little block. Um, think of it like a, a, like a swatch card of colors. Let's just duplicate all of these. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Now, in order to quickly duplicate, all I'm doing here, let's say, get rid of that, get rid of that, boop. All I'm doing is when I click on it, I press and hold the Alt key and the Shift key. Now, the Alt key, look at my icon, it's changed to a little double arrowhead. That means it's going to make a copy and I can freely position it. If I also press the Shift key, it will lock it to the X and the Y axis. Well, actually, it will, it will actually lock it to um, the horizontal or the diagonal, not the vertical. Unless I release it again and then press it, press the Alt key, and, sorry, the, yeah, the Alt key and the Shift key and then move it vertically and then it's locked to the vertical, kind of. I was being a little bit aggressive there uh, with my, my mouse placement, so maybe kind of, maybe came unstuck a little bit. So let's just get, let's just match these up a little bit. There we go, that's fine. Okay, and do another one because we have we have two more colors. Uh, color it that, and uh, yeah, just color that. Don't worry if it's going off the canvas. That's actually okay. Boop. Because now we're going to zoom back out. There we go. Um, group that, and just scale that. There we go. So now, if I just actually push this onto the uh, the artboard, what I might do. Just for example, I'm going to change the artboard size. I'm going to make it, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'll make it like 450 something obscene. Or no, 420 should be fine. There we go. And now I can shove my, my swatch kind of color palette to the edge of the board, which is quite cool. So then, as you can see, because I use the ink dropper to pick some colors, the main kind of colors that is in this Miles Morales artwork I've now actually got a really nice complementary color palette to work from, and that's really cool. I like that. I like that a lot. So, shall we start actually creating some cool artwork? I think we probably should. So, but what I could do, maybe I want a base for my fight stick. So let's just draw a rectangle over here. <laughs> we don't want um, black. Ooh, I don't want black. I want my base to actually be the grey, because the grey is pretty cool, and I think Miles Morales might actually really pop quite nicely on um, on a, a grey kind of, think of like, a, like an undercoat or something like that. So, what we're going to do now, go back to our finder, okay, and find that image that we really liked of Miles Morales. We've got that one, we've got, well, not actually, I'm just going to delete that one because it's so low resolution, it's practically unusable. We've got this one, or we've got this one. Which one would you like me to, to start stylizing for the fight stick? We can have the both of them, but I kind of, I'll leave it up to you guys. You guys can put in the chat if you want me to use image one or image two. What do you think? What do you think? Hoodie Miles. Hoodie Miles is getting a request here. Okay. Yeah, okay, let's do Hoodie Miles. It's pretty good resolution, we can work with that. So what we're going to do, very, very quick and crude. I mean, you can obviously take your time and do an amazing job, but this is for the purposes of a, I guess, a quick tutorial. Uh, what I want to do is right click, open with, and I'm going to open this with in Adobe Illustrator. 
There we go. So it's opened up in Adobe Illustrator. It's obviously massive. The The default artboard is actually too small. So just because I like to do this, I'll open up my artboards. I'll just make sure the canvas artboard is just bigger than the image. I'll get rid of my um, my guide for now as well. So here we are. This is a high resolution, obviously, image. Um, just take it off of Google just for the purposes of this example. And what we can do is using image trace, I just turned that into a vector with the touch of a button, but it's obviously not very good. It's not very detailed. So go to the image trace panel. Okay. And what we want to do is see the threshold. If I move this further over here, just drag up the threshold and you'll start to see that more kind of details are kind of coming through. Kind of cool actually but you're actually losing a lot as well. So maybe you just knock it right back. That's quite smart. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. If I knock it back even further, we start getting some webbing kind of coming through as well. So I quite like that. That's kind of cool. So what I'm going to do now is click on the expand button and that has taken that and turned it into a vector. Okay, so get rid of that panel. But at the moment, you can see I've got a lot of um, like white that I don't actually want. So what I'm going to do is select this big old background, then go up to my select panel, go to same, fill and stroke, and then it will select all of the white. All of the white, and then I'm just going to delete it. Okay, now I'm going to save this as an EPS file. Okay, just save that. And then we're going to put that EPS file into our um, our InDesign file. Okay. So what we want to do is file, if you remember, file, place, or command D, choose the EPS file, and just plonk it in any old where. So that's quite cool, actually. So there you've got, I mean, you could end, you could end it right there. But obviously it's black on a grey, it's not terribly um, high contrast. So maybe we want to just try try that. It's kind of cool. Now obviously we've lost our guide, but that is because our guide was the same colour of red. So let's try different reds. It's really deep. I actually quite like the, the uber bright red. So what I might do is I might actually create a guide of just a different colour. Very, very quickly. Because I like the bright red. So let's just go back to our guide. Um, Here's a template here. What I'm just going to do, I'm actually going to do a, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to do a white guide because that kind of makes sense. There we go. Obviously, you can't see it because it's white. It's the same color as the background canvas. So in, that, in a situation like that, just do Command and Y, and then you get the wireframe view. So you can see anything that is maybe like hidden in, in the background or anything like that. And let's just save that as a different color. Uh, different file name. So WHT is like a shorthand for, for white. So we'll just do that. We'll do it as an EPS as well. Uh, oh, actually, hold on. Um, it doesn't actually have to be, does it? I think it can actually be just an AI file. Yeah, that's fine. Just an AI file. Or an EPS file. That's totally fine. Let's just save that. Okay, we'll cut that down. Go back to our InDesign file. And go to my layers unlock the guide obviously and I'm just going to place that new guide that we created which is whtai and place that in and there you go it's now white which means let me lock that layer again if I select the background kind of color which I created uh, go to my swatch panel and now I can do it bright bright uh, red which is kind of cool so let's just move him around there he's actually quite smart and I can re rescale them, resize them. I can rotate them. Oh, sorry. I can rotate them as well. So he could be like almost like doing a kind of swing or something like that. That's quite cool, actually. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Hmm. But I kind of like him more rotated um, back kind of way he was. Even that's quite cool. Like as if he's coming, coming forward. But obviously we've lost a lot of detail there, right, haven't we? So and what you can do is uh, this little kind of hack I'm going to show you, if I can remember how to do it, of course. So what was it? It was this one here, right? So what you can do is actually open this up in Photoshop, okay? 
Oh, I need to close that down. There we go. It's opened up. What I'm going to do is at the moment, this is on a locked layer because it's a flattened JPEG. So if I just click on the padlock, it then unlocks it. It changed from background to layer zero, which means that I can move it around and there's a transparency behind it. So what I want to do, again, this is going to be so crude. What I'm going to do is grab the pen tool or P, go to my paths tab over here. Down the bottom, there's a little plus square icon. I'm going to select a new path. And what I'm going to do is literally just trace him. Okay, so let's just click on the boot. Click and hold to grab a curve. It's going to be super crude, guys. You can obviously spend a lot more time doing this. And this is probably something that I might like time lapse for the purposes of um, the VOD later on or something. But literally just really quick, really, really quick. I'm just going to do it so badly. It's not going to be accurate at all. I'm just going to go ba 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 Let's just start doing all this stuff. Oh, this is the favourite stream you've watched? Ah, oh, dude. Always been interested in this type of artwork, uh, but it's not something being able to wear myself. Dude, it's, it's, it can actually be, be like really easy or it can be amazingly complicated, but so, so much fun. Like, because, and let me be very clear about this, okay, because this is quite important. We are literally just taking artwork off the internet and just manipulating it and changing it for our own benefit. Normally that is severely frowned upon and I would normally never condone that, but if it's for your personal stuff, have at it. Just go to town, doesn't matter. It's for your own creative expression, your own enjoyment. You're just wanting to trace images that are of existing artwork. That's totally fine. And then manipulating them and changing them, that's fine. But if you start doing this and then decide to try and sell it, no, 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 no. That's, um, that's bad form. That's extremely bad form. And the original artist will be incredibly pissed off. Because I, cause I would be as well. So please don't do that. But if it's for your own creations that you're not going to sell, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter. Google is just like a... Uh, Aladdin's cave of amazing artwork that you can just reference and play around with and experiment with and it's, it's fine. Just um, just learn from it more than anything until you can actually create them yourself. Bang. Okay, that's the path done. But you will see if I just zoom in and zoom in around, whilst the, the main path is done, we've got these little notches that we want to cut out at some point. So what we're going to do is right click. We're going to do make selection. Okay. And then what pops up is this little window here. Just going to do, just leave everything as it is and click OK. And as you can see, we now have a marquee selection tool. Can you see that? Let me just zoom, zoom right in. You can see the marquee selection tool kind of, it's like a little zebra line going on around there. So if I zoom back it out, uh, what I'm going to do is if I just now hit cut, like cut the image out like a cookie cutter, it's going to get rid of miles. We don't want that. We want to invert that. So if I just do command shift I, it's inverted the selection. Okay, so it's going to basically do everything outside of what we had created the path for. 
And then I'm just going to do Command X, which is cut. And as you can see, we've cut him out from the background because we only want Miles anyway. So we clearly have not got everything cut out here. So we're just going to do very quickly, just get rid of all of this other stuff. Again, switching back to my Paths tab, selecting the path we just created because we want to then add to the path. And we're going to do that. Oh, what, sorry, Wade is asking the question, why do I use the path tool and not the automatic tool? Well, like the magic wand? Um, you can, but the, what I find is, let me, okay, hold on. Let me, let me just save this. Oh God, that was awful. Wow. Wow. Terrible. Okay, let me just save this. So Wadey, um, what I've done um, is I've been using the path tool to create my, my own kind of cutout. My own, my own guide, okay? So you're saying, why why do that? Why not just use like the automatic tool, like the magic wand for the, like the magic selection? So if I just open up the original JPEG to show you, uh, where are we? Original JPEG's right here. So this is the original where we were working from, right? Okay, so if I just do the wand tool, which is W, is it W? Oh no, come on. Uh, here you go, magic wand tool to select miles. See, so if I do that, it's selecting, it's trying to find um, a tolerance of the of the color or the part of the image that I've just selected. So try and find similar things. So if I press and hold Shift and do this, see it's, it's selecting more, but then it's then it's come unstuck at this purple here. So then I have to click that. I have to keep on clicking, 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 until we've selected enough. Okay to start building the outline, which we had just done manually, okay? So I'm not gonna select all of this stuff because it will take a while as well. So if I then cut that away, oh, sorry, it's still, uh, let me just, sorry. Undo the little padlock so it's transparent when I cut it away, bang. So I've now cut it away, okay? You think, hey, that actually looks really good. That's, uh, that's actually much faster. However, if I zoom in, look at the ragged edge I've got. Look at that nasty ragged edge. So if I go back to my image, which I cut out and go right in, look at how nice that edge is versus that one. So I'd have to then like get the, the eraser tool or the pen tool and just do what I was gonna do and then start kind of like rubbing out and start doing that. And that's really time consuming as well, whereas if I just create the path, I've got a nice smooth line because I was creating a line. So that's why I don't like to really use the magic wand because it's, it leaves a really nasty ragged edge and um, and it's not as accurate. You, I just created that entire outline there. As you can see, it's lovely and smooth. If I turn the path off, that's just the pixels because I'm zoomed in so much. It's not like a ragged edge, it's just pixels. But there's my path, the blue one over the top of it, which um, looks lovely and smooth. And it gives me a much more accurate outline. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Right, so if you remember now, um, if you remember the last time when we cut out this background, we went onto our um, our path that we just made, okay? We right clicked on it, we went make selection, okay? Click over that, and as you can see, oh, hold on. Oh, what's happened, hold on. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. What's going on here? 
What's the mix like, son? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it was, it threw me because I hadn't selected everything. That was so bizarre. Um, I think it's because I was still on my pen tool and it was only making a selection of the path I had just completed and, and had it selected. But anyway, because we want everything to be selected. So what we're going to do now is, again, because we've made a selection of the toll path, we, we don't want to lose Peter Parker and leave behind all this nasty shit. So again, inverse it. So command shift I will invert it and then command uh, uh, command X will cut it out. There you go. And now we've got a pretty good outline of our Miles Morales. It's pretty dope actually. Uh, but I've just I've actually spotted that I missed one. So there we go. Let's just quickly do that. Let's get rid of that. As well. Very crudely, very crudely. Bye. 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 Boop. There we go. And then we'll just do mix selection. Now remember. You can see here, I've actually kept it selected intentionally. And it's just kept that one. See, it's only given me that selection. So I can actually just... Oh, no. Oh, sorry, my bad. Uh, uh, bang, there we go. Just get rid of it. Yay! Yay. Okay, that's our Miles Morales. So a little bit of extra prep we can do here, okay, is... This is all very, very dark. So maybe we just want to lighten that up again just a little bit so we can get some extra definition there. Just make sure we don't lose it when we come to vectorize it. So what I'm going to do is go to... Where is it? See this lollipop thing here? That is the dodge tool. So let's increase our brush size. There we go. As you see, the, the, uh, the brush head is actually getting bigger. And the dodge tool will lighten up parts of the image where I move the brush over. So... I don't know if that's going to come through on screen or not, but you can see it's actually getting a little bit lighter. If I just keep clicking on that, it's going to get lighter and lighter. And obviously you can change the you know how much it gets lighter with using the exposure tab. It's on 50% right now. So we just lighten up a little bit just to kind of give us a little extra bit of kind of definition within, within the data of the image. Because it is all just data at the end of the day. So... If an image is too dark, then you're kind of... You, you want to bring out that hidden data, okay? So, there we go. So, there's my uh, my thing, okay. So, we're just going to save that. There we go. Okay, now we're going to close that down. Close you down because we didn't use you. Go back to Illustrator, okay? This was our first one, if you remember. Again, that was just done with the original image untreated. So, remember that, untreated, okay? So, let's just do... Back to Finder. Our new one is the MM file, the .psd. Right click, open with um, Adobe Illustrator. So now we've got this here, this this um, this kind of dialogue panel. So we obviously want show the preview. Thank you. There's our image. We've got convert layers to objects, flatten the layers to a single image. That doesn't really matter because it's kind of transparent on a white background anyway, so that's okay. So we're just going to do convert layers to objects and we're going to okay that. So there's our image, right? That's our image. So as you can see, transparent background because we cut it out. That's it there, okay? Uh, if I go back to the original one, that's that there. Let's just compare, okay? So that's there. That was that nasty one that we did like up front. And this is the new one, okay? Which we're going to vectorize. So let me just get my pasteboard or my canvas just a little bit bigger. I don't know, this is just one of these pet peeves that I always have. It doesn't make any sense. I just like to have a, a, a big canvas that, that covers the, the artwork. I don't know why. So, now we're going to do our image trace. So if you remember what we did on this one, we took the raw image and we just went straight to image trace. That's what we did. So this one, now it's prepped a little bit more. Go to image trace and now... Very similar, right? Very similar. The result is very, very similar. So what we can do is go back to... Uh, oh, hold on. What happened here? Go to my tracing result. Why is everything... Uh, okay, that's interesting. Okay, undo that. Let's try that again. Why is everything grayed out? Image trace. Tracing result. There we go. I must have deselected it and then, I don't know, it had a fit. So we want to lower that threshold again. And you can see, oh, you can see we're actually getting a bit more, just a bit more definition 
it's not huge but it's just enough you're getting the uh the trainer kind of grip coming through and that kind of stuff i can lower it even further now you were going to be see so we're getting more definition in his hood in there but we've obviously lost the actual shape of the hood and we lost his trainer so we need to really kind of find a sweet spot that's a little bit more i think a little bit more a little more 64 I think 64 is pretty good actually there we go now the reason why we have lost the web is because of the contrast in the image is so low so let's open up our, our original image again that we cut out so this is very white so white is just going to get lost entirely now if we wanted a little bit more definition in the web what we can do if you remember we brought up the dodge tool originally and that was to lighten the image you, we want to be doing the opposite on the web because the web is already too light. So use the burn tool and then we can go over it. Let's just increase the pressure of it all the way up. So as you can see, I'm actually going over the web, okay? And I'm actually making the web darker, okay? And you're essentially, you're essentially adding a burn effect into the image. So you're not going over it with a with a color or anything like that. You're actually just taking that data and just kind of it's kind of like a, a match to a piece of paper. You're actually burning the image more into the into the actual like source image. This is a cool effect. So if I just kind of get in here, go, I might be like really heavy handed with it actually, just be like over burn it, over burn it. Let's just get it really freaking nasty just to show you the effect it can give us okay let's just keep on going keep on going let's just get it really going really dark because remember we actually want to have the web in her illustration right so even if it's full black doesn't matter because we want it to be able to um create a silhouette from it let's just Get it going, get it going. Uh, let's just keep on clicking. There's a lot of clicks. It's very sore in the old index finger, this. <laughs> I need one of those um, those old arcade joysticks with the turbo button. You just hold the button and it just keeps on firing. <laughs> Who remembers arcades from our childhood? You guys remember that? Guys, I'm having a blast tonight. Are you guys having a blast? I really am. Okay, there we go. Let's, uh, let's do back out. Whoop. So it's much darker. If I go up to my history panel, okay? And as you can see, that's all of the, uh, yeah. The, so if I go to this, that's what it was, okay? And then that's what we've made it. You can see the difference there, okay? Before and after. But we can actually keep on going. Now, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Let's get it just a little bit darker. Just a little bit darker. There we go. Boop, 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 boop. You see this bit is, is so destroyed, it's actually creating a kind of rainbow effect. <laughs> How weird. It's because I'm I'm destroying the pixels to the to the point of uh it's actually making it like a uh, <laughs> I don't know, some kind of prism. Like it's made of glass or something. <laughs> okay, let's just burn burn burn. Get it going, get it going, get it going. Using the burn tool, burn, burn, burn. Just keep go, keep going over it. Excessive amounts of going over it. You would normally never do this necessarily um, in your own artwork. Okay, there we go. Right, let's just save that. That's pretty cool. So as you can see, it's it's way darker now. So this is what it was. Okay, and then this is what it is now. Bang. That's pretty cool. So anyway. What we'll do is we'll close that down because we don't need it. Go back to Illustrator. So this was the one that we were messing around with, okay? So again, just, just get rid of it. We don't need it at all. This was the original, original source. Go back to our Finder. There's my new PSD with the darkened web. Um, open up in Illustrator. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. So here we go. Now, when I go back to Live Trace, as you can see, some of the web is actually coming through now it's getting pulled through so we were down at 64 or something weren't we 
So what I could do is actually make, go, again, go back over that web um, in the, the Photoshop file and make it just really black. Make it really black. So I may actually quickly do that as well. Let's do that. So obviously not dark enough. But remember, we created a path, right? We created a path, guys. So if I select my path, right click, uh, make selection, okay? It selected everything, obviously mouse as well, but the actual parts of the web are selected as well. So what we can do just for funsies is go to layers, select a new layer, um, go select, let's select black, right? Let's make it fully on, full on black. And now we can use our brush tool and just paint it solid black. Now be careful though, because we haven't created a path just for the web. So if I go too far, I'm going to cover up his hand. We don't want to, we don't want to lose his hand. Okay. So just be very careful. Just draw around his hand. Okay. We just want his web. Increase the brush size. Let's just get this going. And this is the beauty of paths. Had we used the magic wand tool, we wouldn't have had this opportunity to do this. So we're just going to fill this in. Fill, 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 fill. Fill. Fill it in. Got to be careful here. But that doesn't really matter. It crosses his body, but it doesn't actually matter because we don't need this section. That section is going to get pulled out anyway from his leg. So that's fine. Let's just get that. We don't want to affect his laces too much. Let's just paint this in. Paint it, paint it, paint it, paint it, paint it. Paint, 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 paint. Paint, 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 paint. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's just get all that going. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back, let's go back. Actually, I think I... I think I may have been a little cut out there, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Not for the purpose of this. Okay, um, let me just zoom in. Get rid of this going, get that going, there we go. That's actually fine, we can actually probably just paint this over as well, that's kind of thing. that's okay, there we go. Okay, it's correct this bit as well, he's holding on to this remember, so careful of his hand, there we go. Okay, so now what we've done here is create a really, a really dark, we uh, dark web. So I'm just going to now merge these layers, okay? So right click that was and then down to merge layers because they were separate and I want them as one. I'm just going to save this as a copy. That's fine. Okay, get rid of it. Don't save the old one. Uh, I want to I want to obviously keep my, my progress on that old one. So I've still got the, the MM1 PSD there, but now we have an MM1 copy PSD. So it's the copy we're going to be putting into Illustrator. Uh, okay, that. Okay. So now, remember that was getting a little bit of definition there. So now if I do it, let's just uh, image trace. There you go. Now we have the full web. And if I knock this back down to our 64, which we thought was a pretty good outline. There you go. So we've gone from that, which had no definition in his, in his trainer. That was the original completely unedited image that we just grabbed from the internet. That was a bit of a treatment where we had a good um, a good amount of detail, but we lost the web. And then with a little bit of further preparation, we've got the full web and we've actually lost a little bit of sneaker. So we can actually raise this up a little bit. And then we've got his, we've got his sneaker back, which I kind of like the, uh, the negative space kind of going on there as well. So we'll go with that. And then we'll just do expand. And then boom, it's, now it's a vector. Now it's a vector. We can manipulate it further if we wanted to. But I want to get rid of the white. Okay. So right, uh, click on click on white space, which is over here. As you can see, it's got there's loads of white here. Select same fill and stroke. I'll grab everything that matches that white and we'll just delete it. There we go. I'm gonna save that as an EPS. Save that to our folder, say just OK all of this, and go back to our um, our thingy. There we go. Our thingy. Our, uh, our kind of fight stick artwork. And we're just going to replace this. 
So, where's Spider-Man? There we go. And there you go. And we can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So now he's kind of like swinging in from off screen. I like how he's kind of swinging in from off screen, okay? Let's get him a little bit bigger. We want to... I don't want to lose his foot to obviously where the, the lever will go and where uh, where the buttons will go. So the fact that it's kind of sitting within there is actually really quite nice. I quite like that actually. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of dope. I mean, that would be pretty cool in itself. But this is a weird, a weird kind of cut off right here. Okay. So what we're going to do is I would actually like that to be kind of extended into the button so what we can do that we actually have a fix for that we can go back into our illustrator file you see the cut off there right just extend the canvas a little bit further doesn't have to be crazy amounts or anything like that and then i want essentially this area here go back to my indesign file so that area there just almost like flipped over Okay, just flip it over so I can get a little bit of a, a, a good extension going. So what I'm going to do is grab the whole thing, press the Alt key so I get the duplication icon over, and then just grab the whole lot. So now I've got a copy. But obviously we just want this bit here. So right click, go to Transform, Reflect, and now it's now it's flipped it on, on the horizontal axis. Okay, so that's great. So now we can kind of match this up like that. Now, you, with a little bit of finessing, you could round this off and make it look like it's the web is still kind of twisting and, and and twining around the main kind of path of the of the web. We're not going to do that for, for today, but instead, just keep that. And now I can just get rid of all of this other stuff, all of this vector stuff, this vector information I don't need. Just get rid of it. So, just selecting what I don't really need. The data points I don't need. And as you can see, I've got quite a smooth continuation that the main arm or the main kind of cord is a nice kind of continuation. So just get rid of this. I'm doing it very, very crudely. You would obviously take way more time to do this properly. But for the purposes of this, oop, there we go. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. Um, let's just extend the canvas a little bit further just to get the whole thing in, because I that's just the way I work. Uh, and then we'll just save it, okay? Now, when I go back to my InDesign file, because we have changed the size of the the source image, you can see it's gone and it's given us like this really nasty kind of pixelation. That is the application telling you there's some visual feedback that there's a, there's a hazard with this image. Something's going on with this image. And it just means it needs to be updated. So click on the little cycle icon, which means that the link will update. But because I increased the width of it, it will st still try and fit it into that original bounding box of the old size. So it's actually shrunk it down. We obviously don't want that. So all we have to do is just go back and resize it back up to where we kind of were. It's like roughly there. There we go. And I can then drag the bounding box back to behind this button. And now we have the web going behind the button. So for the purposes of a very crude mock-up, okay, what I'm going to do... Oh, actually, get rid of that. I'm on facing pages because we're not designing a brochure. Go away. There we go. There we go. So for the purposes of our our crude mock-up, I'm going to go back to my, uh, my layers, create a new a new layer, put that actually above the guide. And this is going to be like my buttons, just for fun, just for shits and giggles. We'll just do do um, the buttons. So what I'm going to do is just start drawing circles because these are going to be like a a little representative of what my, my buttons are going to be. So that's pretty cool. Okay. And let me just move this over. There we go. So I think we're going to have some like blue buttons. Blue buttons looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Uh, let's get some blues going here. So get rid of the black so we can get our colors back. Blues. Let's make some cool blue. <sighs> let's just do a mix. Ooh, like really dark navy buttons would be pretty cool. 
So let's just uh, do that. That's fine. Now, it doesn't look very button-like, does it? So what we want to do... Again, this is just a visual representation. It's not an actual button. So we want to just do a bevel and emboss. There we go. It looks a little bit more. Looks a little bit more like a button. Not a massive amount. Let's increase the bevel. Oh, uh, maybe to three. That's fine. Okay, and then just do another one. Copy and paste it directly on top, and then there we go. That kind of looks like an arcade button now, doesn't it? That's pretty cool. Just like a a fake button effect. That's pretty cool. Kind of like that. But maybe the uh, the bevel is a little bit too heavy. So let's just go back to bevel and boss. Let's reduce it. There we go. That's kind of cool. So I'm just going to select both of those, group them using Command G. So now I've got a, a grouped object. Okay. Pressing the Alt button, click and drag. And I've got that. Boop. And I can just position that roughly. Oh, it's a little bit small. Uh, there we go. Oh, that'll do. Again, same again. There we go. Let's get another one going. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, crikey. Let's just position it for the purposes of this example. Uh, so now we can start to get a feel for a color scheme. Like, I really quite like this blue. So maybe we want Miles to be blue instead of black. So I've created this color. Um, it's actually a CMYK. Let's just change it to um, RGB. There we go. Copy the hex. Okay, that. Go back into our Illustrator file and let's just change Miles to the navy blue instead. There we go. Paste the hex in there. And. Oh, what's happened there? That didn't look like it changed color to me. Oh, wait. What's going on there? That's strange. Oh, it is? Wow. It doesn't look like it's actually changed color. Okay, we'll save it anyway, and we'll go back to InDesign so the file can update. And uh, let's see what's happened here. <laughs> that's, well, that's strange. Why hasn't it changed? Um, hmm. Hmm. Where's my uh, color mode? Color mode is RGB. There's no way that that is. Uh, oh, hold on. Sorry. There we go. The, the color profile was set to grayscale. That's my fault. That is my fault. There we go. Okay, get the whole thing, the blue. There we go. Okay, now we can go back to InDesign. Let it update the file again. Yay! So now we've got this kind of navy blue Miles print relief effect going into the, swinging and going into the buttons from off, off screen. It's gonna go. And what we can also do, let's just grab them, copy them, duplicate them. Oop. Let's just get them lined up roughly, just for the purposes. Again, it's a visual mock-up so you can get a feel for what kind of buttons you want to buy for your, your fight stick, your custom fight stick. Let's go. There we go. It's kind of cool. So, but maybe I want, um, so the, if these are my, my punch buttons, my these are my kick buttons, maybe I want these to be a different color. You know what I mean? Maybe I want them to be red, like a dark red. Or maybe I want them to be like two-tone blue or something like that. Or maybe I just want them to be, I don't know, gray or something. Let's go for a gray color. Let's just go whoop, whoop, all the way down. I mean, they don't look terribly good in gray, but it's like not the end of the world. Kind of cool. I actually quite like the uh, the blue, the two-tone two blue is kind of cool. But maybe we want to start experimenting with more color. So let's just duplicate the spread. And we're going to change the background color. Okay, let's go to uh, blah, 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 my color. Oh, sorry, swatches. And let's let's go full on dark. And now we can get these back to red buttons, nice bright red buttons, and get them maybe white. That can be white. Obviously, we've completely lost our Miles Morales, but that's okay. What we can now do is select you and make you. A white color okay obviously we can't see them so remember we want the wireframe that is command y and we'll save you as a copy uh, and uh, hyphen wht for white okay white color so we'll just save that go back to our indesign file and replace the link even that's 
kind of cool. I mean, it kind of works. It's not bad. You, you can't, it's not as cool as having it dark, though. Let's be honest, it's not as cool as having it dark. So maybe we just go full black and have him red. So let's just get black going. Or, or we do him navy. And, okay, 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 I've got an idea. Let's slide this and do him, what's the, what's the red color? What's the values of the red? Here we go. FF triple, uh, quadruple zero. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, FF zero, 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 zero. Okay. Now, come out of wireframe frame mode, obviously. And now you're red. So let's just change the file name. Back to red. We'll save that. Again, we're making copies. We don't want to overwrite anything too severely. So we're just going to be um, getting as many copies as we can to experiment with. Ooh. It's kind of cool. So then we've got like a... A red and navy effect, which is kind of smart. A couple of different options. It's kind of cool. It's not bad, actually, isn't it? It's pretty cool. But you could, like, this, the sky's the limit with what you could do. I mean, I actually kind of thought it would be pretty cool to uh, um, have these buttons as little spider webs. So let's go with, um, let's go back to uh, um, Chrome, uh, Chrome, our web browser, and just do spider webs. Uh, Spider-Man webs. There we go. Let's see what happens here. We just there we go. That's actually really that's actually really cool. This is a very crude one. Let's just do that. Uh, copy image. Let's go. Let's just paste it from Chrome straight into Illustrator, just for the the sake of this. There we go. And then we'll just do an image trace. That's not bad. That is not bad actually, because it's a very simple image. It's only a two-color image, and we'll just expand it. There we go. Okay, now, I obviously do not want this here. I don't want the uh, the black. I want the white. But I don't think there's any color in the whites. There's not. It's just the black that is the, uh, um, the object. So, let's just undo all of that. What I'll do instead, and what you can do instead, instead of pasting it directly into Illustrator, paste it directly into Photoshop, okay? And don't worry about the small resolution size or anything like that. But now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to invert the full image. So the white should become black and the red should become like a lighter color. You're kind of like inverting the colors, you're flipping it. So Command I, let's give it a blue, that's quite interesting. But that's fine, that's kind of what we want. So I'm just going to then copy and paste that back into um, our Illustrator file, okay. There we go, that's our new color. Because remember, it's, it's the web part that we actually want, not the red part, or in this case, the blue part. So, image trace, boom, we've got it, but it's still not a vector yet. It's traced it out, but then we have to click expand, remember, and then click on the now white part, go up to select, same, fill in stroke, it's grabbed all of the white of the image, and we just want to get rid of that. There we go. And we've actually got some weird things going on. We probably should have cropped that image a little bit more. But that's okay. But that's okay. So what we're going to do now is grab all of that, copy it. And this is what you can do this, but you probably shouldn't. You should really make like an EPS file or an Illustrator file out of this. But some fairly simple vectors you can copy and paste directly into InDesign. I'm going to do that now. So as you see, it comes in and you can actually recolor it exactly straight away in InDesign. So I'm just going to resize this, okay? And I'm going to whack it inside the button. Because I think it would look pretty cool having it inside the button. So uh, Command C, Command X is to copy and cut. Then I, this is a grouped object, so double click into it to get the middle one. And then we want to do right click, paste into. And as you can see, it's pasted it into the button shape. But it's obviously not perfectly lined up with the center, so when I get over the center point of an object, you'll see this little double circle appear. That means that I am selecting the contents of an object that I have pasted stuff into. So do that and just reposition it using the arrow keys. I can make it even smaller. There we go. That's kind of cool. 
or a web or a web button so you can make little kind of custom buttons and things like that it's pretty cool and you could have them going across all of them so i could just double click on here paste it oh paste it into but as you can see whilst i've pasted it into this object why is there nothing here why is it not showing up well it's because it's pasted it into the object in its original location which was way over here so if <laughs> What I can then do is, I mean, I'm trying to remember my commands here. So, Command Alt Shift and C. Nope. Oh, what is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, did I actually? I don't think I did. Hold on. Sorry, paste into. There we go. That I didn't paste anything into it. So, as you can see, it's off center because it's pasted it into its original position. So, select that, and there we go. Just do that. Let's just resize that a little bit. So I'm doing an auto resize, and that is Command, Alt, Shift, and C together. It will resize the contents to the bounding box, which is quite a useful little, little tool. And then you can just use the arrow keys, directly select the content, use the arrow keys, and start repositioning. So it's kind of over the center, but obviously it's not terribly accurate because the source artwork for the web wasn't perfectly symmetrical, wasn't perfectly geometrical, but you can have some fun with it. So I'm using shortcuts here just to kind of blast these. It's kind of cool. Let's just reposition that a little bit. Bye. There we go. Get that done. And we'll have some white, some black webbing going on as well. So obviously it's the wrong color. I need to change the color of it. There we go. Ooh. Well, that's kind of weird. Maybe blue. Blue webbing? You can't really tell at that scale. But never mind. Hey, that's quite cool. Ooh, that's quite cool. So what I actually did there is instead of changing the color of the web, I actually changed the color of the bounding shape. So let's get the web uh, back to its white. There we go. And double s s uh, click on the circle for the, the circle color is white. Let's change that to there. That's kind of cool. I'm kind of liking that. Let's just change that. Change that as well. And we just go boop. Oh, shit. All right, wrong, wrong one, wrong one. Wrong shortcut. There we go. We'll get them done. No. There we go. I'm moving too fast, guys. I'm pressing the wrong, uh, the wrong, <laughs> the wrong uh, things, the wrong shortcuts. So you can have some fun, you know, with that. It's actually pretty cool. You can do some crazy stuff i mean i don't it's certainly not my my best fight stick i actually prefer this one so what i would probably do is um do this one as webs like that that's kind of cool actually really the heck there we go Ta -da -da. there we go let's just get these pasted in here dude really Sometimes it has a problem selecting the objects. There we go. Let's just get that done. There you go. That's quite cool. You know, like it, hate it, doesn't really matter. You're just kind of having fun. You're experimenting with um, uh, your artwork. I, man, there's something in there. It needs, it needs obviously a lot more work before we're really happy with it or anything like that. But I quite like the dark. The navy blue print of Miles Morales and uh, making a bit of a feature off of these webs. I mean, actually, what you probably should do is make them red webs. That's pretty tight, actually. I quite like that. That's quite nice. There we go. Yeah, that's quite cool. It's actually pretty cool. And what you could also do, guys, wait for it. Just wait for it. Where is the... Um, blah, 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 blah. Spider Man um, Funko. Let's do the Spider Man Funko. There you go. So, actually, no, Spider Man face. There's a circular face of Spider Man, right? Uh, round face? Let's try this. There we go. How about that for a button? Let's see if we can get some larger size ones. Go to two sizes, large. Um, 
I mean, you could you could obviously draw these yourself, but I'm just doing this for speed. I have a good. Let's do that. Uh, copy. Let's get this into Photoshop real quickly. Get rid get rid of that. Don't need that. Oh, it's tiny. It's really small. Not bad though. Let's get rid of this. Yeah. Ooh. Hmm. Actually. Don't say that. Maybe if you try pasting it directly into Illustrator. Let's see what happens. Give us a new canvas, please. A new piece of artwork. Uh, image trace. Whoa. Okay. Ah, <laughs> that's kind of cool. It's not accurate at all because it's so small. But you get the gist, right? Oh. God, it's gone like Deadpool. Let's see if we can find a better one. Um... I can't believe there's not like a high resolution one. Ah, oh, that's not bad. Copy image. That'll do. Sorry, dude. There we go. Much higher. Wow. Well. Oh, I hate it when. Why do people do that? Why do people do that? You think it's a it's a tra it's a transparent PNG, but some son of a gun has just made a checkerboard effect and made a JPEG out of it. When you think it's, when you think it's actually got a transparent background and it doesn't. Hate that. <laughs> Hey, that's quite cool. It's not bad. See, we have to take the threshold way down, but that's okay. Okay, let's just create a vector of that. Select, same, fill color. Oop, oops, get rid of that. And that has, we've got like a Spider-Man roundel now. That's kind of cool. So we're just going to copy that, paste it into our um, our thing, our InDesign file. That's kind of cool. Whoop. That's actually really cool. Like you could have you could have that as part of the design all on its own, but obviously these need to go back to red buttons. Clearly, red buttons on a red background is actually kind of tight as well. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, and we're just gonna resize it, resize it a little bit, reposition it. There we go, and copy cut. Select the um, the inner button and whack it in there, and then you've got. Look at that, that's kind of cool. Obviously, don't have the white eyes, but that's okay. That's actually pretty cool. Maybe it's a little bit. Hold on, sizing needs to be adjusted a smidgen. Oh no! Hold on. There we go. Let's just adjust it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's just get it to the right size. There we go. That's totally cool. Instead of having to faff around with the sizing properly, we'll just grab the whole button. And we'll just create another four. <coughs> and then, because this is the placement of where we want the button, just select both of them. Oops. Select both of them, not the contents, and just use your alignment tools. There we go. There we go. Get them in the exact position that we want. Now, obviously, we've got buttons beneath here that we don't want. So, double select... Uh, Select all of these, copy cut again, select the ones we don't want, delete those, and then do um, Command, Alt, and V, and it will paste in place all the buttons that we actually wanted. There we go. That's kind of cool. That's not bad, actually. It's kind of funky. It's kind of cool. But maybe we should, we should make them the blue so the color scheme is all matching properly, right? Let's just do that. Let's just do that. That's pretty cool. That's not bad. I'm kind of, I'm kind of liking that. There's um, something there, right? There's something something there. Anyway. <laughs> this is fun. I'm having good fun tonight. It's a, it's a good blast. It's a good laugh anyway, that's for sure. So, what do you think, guys? Are you Has this inspired you to maybe create some artwork? Um, have some fun with some vector artwork? Um, just experiment, have a lot of fun. Like, I'd be, I'd be, imagine rocking up to... I'm actually going to delete this one because I don't actually like it. Uh, yeah, get rid of that. Bin. Um, yeah, just get rid of them. There we go. I mean, you could do a black and red one as well. It might be quite interesting. I quite like the navy and um, the uh, 
the uh, thingamajig. What do you call it? The, the navy in the red. God, I can't, I can't get my words together tonight. But yeah. Oh, and um, of course you'll get the uh, the ball top. Let's let's do a quick ball top um, kind of mock up. What color should we do the ball top? Maybe white. A really clean white ball top. That could be quite quite nice. Uh -huh. Let's go to um, effects, bevel and emboss. Obviously, it needs to be look like a round ball, so we've got to have to really ramp up the uh, <laughs> the effect there. There we go, and let's get a little bit of a drop shadow going as well. Let's just offset it. There we go. There we go. Get the size going. Get a little bit of a shadow going, so it looks like it's a lever sticking up. There we go. <laughs> and there's your face stick. Your face stick mock-up. That's kind of cool, right? What do you think? What do you think, folks? It's no bad, is it? It's no bad. <laughs> Wait, he's saying that you need you need a few more streams before you're ready to give it a go. But yeah, it's kind of, you can have so much fun. And that's just that's actually a very simple um, kind of design of a fight stick. So that's the Miles Morales one. The original plan, of course, was to um, do an Into the Spider-Verse stick with Spider-Gwen and Peter Parker and Miles Morales. Maybe we'll do that on the next one. Or maybe we'll do a uh, DC themed fight stick artwork or something like that. I don't know. But guys, that's it for me. I'm going to end the stream there. It's almost almost two hours, but not quite. Um, that's just a, a pretty cool and quick rundown of how you can create some um, pretty slick artwork very simply, very quickly, um, just using some tips and tricks of um, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and comping it together uh, in InDesign. Again, you could comp it together in Photoshop as well. You, and also there's alternative packages where you can achieve all of this as well. It's just that I use Adobe products, Adobe Creative Suite. And I, I, I really have a good time um, just messing around and doing this kind of stuff. But yeah, thank you for watching everybody. Hopefully you found it informative. Let me know in the comments if you want to see any specific designs or any specific tips tutorials whatever um and we can do a special stream and let you guys be a real part of it to um like to workshop stuff and, and do stuff and create stuff together could be good fun but yeah that's it bye bye see you in the next one